Sick. All right, so here's the deal. We got a full day for you, and I got to be hit the time. That way we don't log jam anything today. But I got a message, and I want you, if you got a notebook, if you bought one, if you brought one, or if you got your phone, that's cool too. At the top of it, if you're ready, say, I'm ready. Oh, I said, if you're ready, say, I'm ready. There we go. Put get in the gym. Get in the gym. That's what I want to bring, preach for you today. That's what I want to bring. And how many of you have kind of caught the vibe that we got a little bit of a basketball theme this year? You guys, you guys noticed that a little bit? How many of you like basketball? A few of you? Okay. How many of you would agree that Michael Jordan is the greatest player of all time? Okay. Who says LeBron? The altars are open. Make it happen. Kobe. Who says Kobe? A few? Okay. I'm good with it. It's all good. I want to... I want to walk through, get in the gym. See, when I was growing up, there's a lot of times that we have a favorite place, a favorite spot in your house. How many of you are like, my favorite thing in the house is my bed? And like, that's, that's where I wish I was right now. When I was growing up, my favorite thing in the house wasn't actually in the house, but it was one of these right here. And it looked a lot like this one. It wasn't fancy. It wasn't like one of the ones that we got in the backyard now. It wasn't one that I could, I could swing from the rim from and, and all that. But I spent hours and hours in a gravel driveway right here. Right here, just doing this. Just running around. Going, I'd run back inside. And my little brother, he was not an athlete at all. I said, hey, Brian, if you don't come out here and rebound for me, then something is just going to magically happen to your PS2. Your DS is just going to disappear. So, like, I, I would bully my brother in coming out so that I could go outside and I could rebound, and he could rebound for me. Who hates that? When that moment happens, when it hits the bottom like that. And I would spend a lot of hours just in the driveway, just a ball and a basket. And it was my favorite place at our home. See, there's, there's some of you today that don't recognize that you are a favorite in the eyes of God. He's created the creation that we live in, the, the world we live in that has so much tone and texture and color and all the things we get to appreciate. But the thing that he is most proud of and the most values is every single one of us, that we are made in his image and he loves us so much that there was the moment that he said, you know what? I want to restore a relationship with them. That there's something that's disconnected the moment that Adam and Eve, they sinned in the garden and, and they, they fell short in the, the destruction and the doubt and the death and the things of the world that we were never supposed to understand came in. He's, God said, you know what? I'm going to restore that and I'm going to redeem this relationship that it desired for us. And so he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And not only did he send him as a sacrifice, to pay the ultimate price and all the debt and all the guilt and all the things that we never could. Not only did he pay this, the price and pay the sacrifice, but three days later he rose again and he conquered the grave. See, he, he defeated the things that you struggle with. He carried and bore the shame that you hurt with and that you feel. Because he values you so much that you are a favorite in the eyes of God. But just because we may be something that God values or someone that God values and he created us and he called us, we still get the option to show up to a place like this. We get the option to follow. We got the option to step. We get the option to obey. And he doesn't force anything upon us. And so today I want to walk through a story of two gentlemen in the Old Testament. And their names are Elijah and Elisha. Elijah and Elisha. And it says this, we're going to get into 1 Kings chapter 19. Elijah was a prophet. He was a man that was called by God. And as a man that was called by God to deliver messages, he performed miracles. He did all kinds of incredible things. There was a moment that he, he proved the gods of the, the foreign lands that they were wrong, that they, that they didn't exist, that they weren't real. And he made challenge over challenge over challenge to prove that our God is a true God. 
that fire would make wood upon an altar that was wet, burnt. He, did, he, he proved the gods of Baal wrong. Just like maybe you have the opportunity to prove so many things in our culture that we live in today, to prove them wrong. But Elijah was like the dude. Like he was like, we have the debate of, of MJ or LeBron. Like he, there was no debate. Elijah was like the prophet. He was the one that led the people. He was the one that they sought after. He was the one that they followed. They were, he was the one that they listened to. And so there was, there was no debate. If it came from Elijah, it came from God. And it says this in 1 Kings chapter 19. It says, so he departed from there and he found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen in front of him and he was with the 12th. And then Elijah passed him by and cast his cloak upon him and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me kiss my father and mother and then I will follow you. And he said to him, he said, go back again for what I have done, what have I done to you? And he returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. In this moment, we see a young man in Elisha that has a, all that the world could ever ask for and ever desire. In the imagery that we see that this, this guy, Elisha, that he was leaving his family and he threw a party and he, he killed this cattle and all these things to throw a party to serve the people of his community. It wasn't just that he threw a party to serve his family, but that means that people after people and group after group were showing up and he was serving them, saying that I'm going to give up everything I had. Like this dude would have money. He wasn't just another person. He was giving up something significant to go and follow this guy, Elijah. In order to fulfill and step into purpose and calling. And so in this moment, we see someone that says, you know what? The things that I have, they, don't, they aren't what define me. The people that are around me, they aren't what define me. But there's something more that is in store for me. But I got to get to the right person and around the right kind of people to figure out what that looks like. And there's a lot of us in the room right now in these moments that we are sitting in a season right now that we're trying to figure out where we're supposed to be going and we can't figure it out because we're not around the right kind of people. We got to get, you got to have a mentor, you got to have an encourager, you got to have someone coaching, you got someone with you. And so Elisha says, you know what, all the money, all the wealth, all the property, all the people, all the things I have, I'm going to give them up and I'm going to bless the people around me with it, but I'm going to give it all up so I can find someone to attach to, to learn from, and to listen to. And that's what he does in this moment. He, so he seeks and he begins to follow. And this is what we get to do. You won't be able to lead and influence anyone around you in a proper way until you first follow and you have to follow Jesus for proper leadership and influence. If you want to make a difference in the people around you, you have to be filled with something. You see these basketballs right here. They're a little bit different in the, in the color, a little bit different maybe in the size, and a little bit different in, in what they are. They're both a basketball, but there's just a, a couple tweaks on them. And it's like a lot of us in the room. If you walked across the room, you're not going to find one person that looks like you. They may have the same hair color. They may kind of have the same build. They may have some of the same interests. They may, have, they may wear glasses and you wear glasses. But when it comes down to it, you're, you're still too different. But there is something that's significantly different about each of these. And they both have a purpose, but they got to be used for their purpose. And so this one is filled. There's air within it. We can bounce it. We can use it. It, it, will, it will fulfill its objective and its job to be a basketball. Whereas this one, when you first look at it, it may look like what you needed to do. But when we check out what the substance is in it, it's flat. It doesn't work like it's supposed to. It may look like it does, but it doesn't. And there's some of us in the room today that are similar in this moment. That you're not filled with anything. And if you're filled with something, it's all junk. It's nothing of value, it's nothing of substance. And the Spirit of God is ready to fill you. 
When you say yes to following Jesus, the Holy Spirit that fills you to give you purpose and existence in your life so that you can complete an objective and a call that he has placed upon you. And this is the difference in these two balls. This, yes, it has a purpose, it has an objective, but it cannot complete it unless the right thing is put within it. And so what are the things that you are placing within you? Because the first thing I want to get you to today is do not waste your gift. And the first gift that you can receive is salvation. To be filled with the Spirit, to say, you know what, what, what I once was, I no longer am. What I once struggled with, I, I'm, I'm being healed and restored from that. The fact that, that the, the generation I live in that has identified me with whatever name or whatever list you want to break down or go through, diagnosed me as depressed, labeled me as trans, called me an addict. The list goes on and on in what your generation could be labeled as. Lazy, selfish, inconsiderate. You have been given a gift to say, I'm going to follow Jesus, and then you will have the gift to be received. You, but you have to pick it up to be filled, to choose to follow Jesus and say, that I believe I've been set free. I believe he has something in store for me. That the things of this world do not define me, but the creator of it, heaven and earth does. That there is no other name above all names, and he has named me. He has called me. And to accept that gift and that purpose to say, you know what, God, whatever it is around me in this world, I don't want it. All I want is you. That's what Elisha is doing in this moment. See, now I've got all the other stuff. I've, I've, I've got everything else that everybody says I need, but there's something more that God is calling me to. Do not waste your gift in these moments. It takes absolute surrender. You cannot be half in and half out. If you are 70% free and 30% chained to something, you are still living in bondage. You are not in total freedom. And God desires total freedom for every single one of you. And so to be able to live a life of surrender says, you know what? I believe that God has called me and he has a purpose for my life, but I have to be filled with the purpose. I have to be filled with the Spirit so that something can happen. And I may not know what that is in the moment, but I know that God is working me and I will be placed in the right atmosphere to be used when God calls me. To be filled by the Spirit in those moments of salvation. The moment you say yes to Jesus, that you will be filled with the Spirit and you will be made new. Be made free. A brand new creation is what the Word says. It says in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9, this is the moment that we get to see something incredible take place. It's been about six years that Elisha has followed Elijah. And so in this moment, it says that when they had crossed the Jordan, Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, you have asked a really hard thing. One of my favorite questions to ask is when was the last time that your faith got you in trouble? When was the last time that you went to someone and you said, I need you to pray with me in this moment because I'm believing for this or I desire this. And they're saying, I want the same kind of faith that you had to even make the request. That's what Elisha is doing in this moment. And Elijah says, you have may asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be said and so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on, they talked and they walked. And then behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and cried and said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. How many of you in the moment were like right now, if all of a sudden chariots and fire and stuff started raining from the skies and some of us were just gone, we'd be like, what just happened? Like, can we admit that some of us will probably be scared? Like, raise your hand if you're like, fire, chariots, horses. All right, I don't know about this. I'm like, raise your hand if you're like, I'm, I'm scared of that. Like, I don't know about it. But Elisha, he looks, he says, my father, my father. And then he saw him no more. And then he took a hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. And he took up the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and he stood on the bank of the Jordan. 
And then he took the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, the water was parted to one side and to the other. And then Elisha crossed it and went over. You see, there's something that happens in this moment is that Elisha now steps into boldness. There's other people that have been following Elijah and they've been learning. They've been spending the same amount of time with Elisha watching and learning and listening. And they've seen Elijah perform these miracles. They've seen, they've had the moments where he's had an encounter with God and he's, he's gone and he's preached and he's brought the word before him and he's changed these nations. And all these. They've watched this, but only Elisha was the one that actually walked across the Jordan with him. And so when we say surrender your life so that you can be filled with the spirit, so that your life won't look the same as what it looked like yesterday, goodbye yesterday, I'm living in the ways of a new day. It's what Elisha's doing. So he walked, and when he got there, he made a crazy request because here's the deal. Don't waste your time that you're waiting. Don't waste the time when you're waiting. See, the others, they stood on the bank and they watched Elijah. They didn't know what was happening. And Elisha said, no, I'm going with you. I got to get some of this. I want to see what's going to happen. And and not only am I going to go with you, but Elijah, here's the deal. I want twice of whatever God has given you. I want more of it. I want double it. Like this would be the same thing as like Steph Curry walking up to, to, to Michael Jordan and be like, hey, you might be the greatest of all time, but I want to be twice as good as you. I'm not going to settle. Can you imagine like LeBron going like, hey, there's this debate between who's gonna be the best, but I wanna be twice as good as you. I wanna be twice whatever the person before me was. This is a bold request, and Elijah Elijah even looks at me and says, you've made a great request, and I, I I don't know if it'll happen, but Elisha was still bold enough to say, no, 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 I want more. He didn't waste the time that he spent watching He didn't waste the time where others were on the banks. He didn't waste the time. And he said, no, I am going and I am on mission and God has called me this. I've given everything else up. And so I am pursuing this. And I want double of what you have. I've seen the miracles. I've seen the things that God has done through you. And I want to make an even bigger impact and a bigger difference than you. So you surrender and then you seek. You surrender and you seek and say, what can I learn in this process? Because when you, where you sit in your generation, do not waste the time where you're saying, you know what, no one's going to look at me. No one's going to be watching because someone is always watching. And there's going to be opportunities and moments when you rise up and are you going to be ready for the moment? Because you won't ever make a difference if you waste your development. And you're sitting in seasons right now where God is preparing you for something. And so while he is developing you, while he is he's instilling things inside of you, while he is showing you things, while he is refining you, while he is he's pulling things back and revealing things, saying, no, 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 you don't have to be like that. You don't have to act like that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to believe that. So that when you get into the moment where God is calling to you, or you're getting into the conversation and he's saying, no, I have prepared you for this moment and you're going to make a difference because you've been developed. Don't waste the season. Don't waste the moment where you're saying, you know what, like, I, I can get there. I'll just wait till, because I'll, let me tell you right now, one of the greatest regrets that I live with on the daily are the moments where God lays someone on my heart. And it's someone from eighth grade, 10th grade, senior year. And it's something as simple as, hey, send them a text, make a phone call, invite them to church, ask them what their life was like. And the first thing that I feel in the guilt and the shame is, hey, Aaron, You didn't do it 15 years ago. Why would they listen to you now? Hey, Aaron, you weren't intentional about the investment. You weren't intentional about their their, their future then. Why, Why would they care what you have to say now? And there are people that are around you for a specific reason, and God has put them around you so that you can change the world that is around you, and it starts within you. To seek, to learn, to grow, to develop. You can spend hour upon hour, sitting in your room, sitting in a gym, looking at a ball. But unless you do something with it, you will never be able to actually go to the basket and go through defenders and put it off the board and score. 
Just because you look at the ball doesn't give it purpose. Someone has to put it into action. And so to be filled with the Spirit and to say, what can I learn? How can, what are the fundamentals? What are the things? How do I pray? How do I study? How do I lead? How do I encourage? How do I care? So that I can be filled with the Spirit and so I can seek who God is and put that on display to the world around me. See, if Elisha had him first offered himself to follow Elijah, he would have always stayed a farmer. He would have always stayed a farmer, making a lot of money. But none, money doesn't equate miracles. And when he stepped out of being what he accepted and stepped into his calling, he began to be in a world where God performed miracles. And if he hadn't stepped, if he hadn't saw, if he hadn't learned, if he hadn't spent the six years waiting and learning, he wouldn't have been prepared for what he was stepping into next. There were other prophets but Elisha is the one that walked. Elisha is the one that went. He stuck close even until the very end when Elijah was gone. He said, my father, my father, and he was gone. He didn't waste his time in development. He didn't waste his time waiting, and he didn't waste his time for the miracles that happened. You see, the the water the Jordan was filled again. And so he had to walk over and he had to pick up Elijah's cloak. And he had to watch the miracle take place. And as the water was split, he then walked across the water and walked back to the other prophets. And some of you are in a moment right now where you've seen God split the waters and you're, you're nervous to walk back to the, the land that you came from. You're scared to walk back to the people that you've been around. But when you walk back, God, you've had an encounter with God, whether it's this weekend, it's in your moment at home, it's driving down the highway in worship, whatever it might be, where you've had a moment with God and say, no, I'm going to walk through the miracle and I'm going to see what he does next because I've been seeking him and I have surrendered in these moments. And so he doesn't waste his playing time. He gets in the gym. He surrenders. So that's what I'm asking you today. What is it that God is calling you to do? Don't waste the moment that you get into the game. Isaiah, come here for me real quick. Come up here. In the Ram shirt, come here for me. You can come all the way up. Give me three more volunteers. In the red, Kylie. I need another girl. Bailey, come on. The objective of the game of basketball is to score. Spread out a little bit. What's your name? Aiden, do you play basketball? Cool. Bailey, you don't, but you, you're good. Here's the deal. You know what's really boring in basketball? Just pass that around for a minute. It's really boring when people play stall ball. It's really annoying, actually. They're playing monkey in the middle, playing keep away from Kylie. It's why there's a shot clock. Because right now, even the ball's fulfilling some of its purpose, and it's getting passed around. But I, need, I want someone to, Kylie, go for it. Go shoot a layup. Keep working. So you pass it around, score. Someone, Isaiah, don't rip the rim off. It's a little goal. So just keep working. Here's the deal. That ball can get passed around, but until someone takes a shot and it goes through the net, there is no score. And you know what's cool about this moment is that even though Isaiah or Kylie or Aiden or Bailey may take the shot, the whole team scores. And so for every single one of you in the room today, what's really cool when you step into calling and you step into purpose, not only do you get to see miracles take place in your life, but the team gets to see the miracles take place. 
See, not only do you score when you step into your calling, but the kingdom of God scores in these moments. So when you begin to walk and you walk through purpose and the ball rolls away and there's someone else, Connor, don't waste the playing time because it's really annoying when someone gets on the court and the ball stops. It's really annoying when someone gets on the court and they don't know what to do with it. Be the best at what God has called you to be because he's called you to it. Y'all are good. You can go sit down. Here's the deal. Until someone shoots the ball, the score doesn't change. And no matter who scores, the team scores. And there is an opponent that we are up against that is doing all he can not only to win, but to play dirty and to play cheap and to take you out. And so are you going to be disciplined in your development so you can step into calling and purpose so that the kingdom of God will continue to grow and the hell will downsize? Because someone has to score. You see Elisha, he said, I want double what you had, Elijah. I want double. So he actually saw twice as many miracles take place than Elijah did. Doubled the miracles. Now his miracles looked a little different. Elijah's were like really wowing and really big and they were extravagant. And Elijah's were very intentional and personal with the people that were around him. He prophesied over a lady and said, hey, one day you're going to have a son. And she said, no, like I'm too old. That's not going to happen. He's like, no, it's going to happen. And guess what? She had a son. And that same lady, her son got sick. He got sick. And now she's all upset. And she's bummed because, hey, this thing, this, this child that you said that I was going to be blessed with. Now, like, what am I supposed to do? But he healed him. Elisha showed up and he healed the, he healed the boy. He made the axe head float in the water, the thing that should sink, sink. He, he made it float. He walked across the Jordan. He healed the waters for the city by putting salt in them. What is it that God is calling you to step into? For some of you, it's, being, it's a calling to ministry. Some of you, it's a calling to start something in your school that stirs up a revival. Some of you, it's to actually just be engaged and not just show up on a, on a midweek experience or a Wednesday night or a Sunday night, but it's to, to plug in and to serve in the local church. But to be filled with the Spirit so that you don't look, walk around just looking like you know what's going on. Just being another person that's a part of the box. But when the test comes and you put it, get put in the game and you fall flat on your face because you aren't filled with the right stuff. To, to spend the seasons you're in right now waiting and learning and finding people to invest in you and to pour into you to say, I want double of whatever the generation before me had. And so when the time comes and you get in the game, you don't waste the playing time. I say, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna take my shot because we're gonna score, we're gonna win. This generation is going to win. And it's going to start because I have the heart of a champion. My God who is for me, that went before me, that I have victory in whatever I face because he has already done it. And so here's what I want to do in the room today in this moment. It says this in John chapter 9, verse 4. It says, we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. For night is coming when no one else can work. Don't waste this moment. Because right now, you have the moment. Night is coming. There's going to be a day that we're not here anymore. But while it is day, walk out your calling. I want you to stand to your feet with me for just a second. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes as we get ready to go back into worship. If maybe last night you didn't say, but you right now you're like, I want to say yes to Jesus. I want to surrender my life to him. I want to be filled by that spirit so that I have purpose, so that I have forgiveness, so that I have freedom. If 
that's you today, here in a moment, make your way back to the back to one of those tables and a leader and let the, walk with them through that. Maybe you're saying today, like, I, I am wasting my moments every single day. And I want to actually be intentional and I want to know the fundamentals and I want to be better. I want to improve and I want to, so when I get in the game and I step into the calling that God has in store for me, I'm ready. Maybe today you're saying, you know what? I got to get in the game and I want to make sure that I'm ready. To, I want to make the play. If you're saying, hey, I, I, I am called to ministry. That's something I'm wrestling with. It's something I'm walking through. Where I just got questions about it. Let me know. But here's what I want us to do for the, like the next five minutes. Just worship and seek. Maybe it's stay in your seat right now and to turn around and kneel in it or to sit in it and just pray and say, God, listen, I need you to fill me. Give me a fresh wind. Give me a fresh heart. Give me a fresh vision. Maybe it's to come to the altar and get on your knees and say, God, I'm here and I, want, I don't want to waste the moments that I have. I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to, be, I want to be developed. I want to be disciplined in it so that people will see you in me. That when I walk my hallways, that the, the, the feeling in the hall is different because of your radiance from me. Maybe some of you are stepping into the moment. Maybe some of you adult leaders that are in the room, they think, I need to get in the game and not waste the moments that I'm in the game. If you got a youth pastor and you got something, go find them and pray with them. There are leaders across this room, but here's the deal. I don't want you to just rush the stage because we rushed the stage. I want you to worship and seek in this moment. If you got to stay in your seat, stay in your seat. If you want to come to the front and you want to kneel, if you want to come to the front and worship, do it. But for the next few minutes, God, what are you calling me into? God, what do I need to step into? God, what is the miracle that I need to be believing for? What is the miracle I need to walk across? so I can get back to what you're calling me to. Father, we thank you. God, we praise you. We give you all the glory and the honor. God, I thank you right now for a generation. God, and I pray that they be intentional about these moments. God, that they seek you. God, you make yourself known. God, that we worship you and we praise you in the mountaintops and in the valleys. God, I pray right now that we recognize there is victory in whatever we face and we trust you for it because you have gone before us. You have cleared the enemy out. If we would just walk in confidence and faith and boldness that you have gone before us. God, I pray right now for any student in this room or maybe any adult in this room that's saying, you know what, I feel called to ministry, but I'm gonna have to give some stuff up. God, that they recognize that there's gonna be miracle upon miracle around them and before them that they never knew were gonna exist. God, I pray we have the boldness as a generation to say, I want double what the person before me had. That I wanna make an impact and a difference that I can't even dream about, but it is pointing people to your kingdom. God, I pray right now that we lift your name on high, that we trust you, we believe you for it. God, in all things, God, I thank you for what you have in store today. God, be freedom, be forgiveness, be redemption, be peace, be comfort, be love. God, we thank you. God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise in Jesus' name.